Good morning and welcome. We welcome those of you here with us at St. John's and those of you uh, watching uh, online. The first hymn is hymn 690, hymn 690. begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The first lesson is from Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He bought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. I anointed your king over Israel and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13, and we're going to say it together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. This morning's New Testament lesson is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, 
making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to be the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When, I, when it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. And this is the word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Verily, truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God which comes down from heaven and gives life to, to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It seemed to happen much more often when we had teenage boys living at home. There on the third shelf in the back of the refrigerator, Something would be there that nobody knew what it was or how long it had been there. One of the kids would come out and say, Mom, there's another science experiment in the fridge. I think the, the high school where my sons went were aware of that because one of them came home one day and said, Mr. O, that was their biology teacher, Mr. O gave us a new rule. When in doubt, throw it out. Jesus speaks to us about perishable food today. Maybe not quite that same kind of perishability. But nevertheless, he says to us, do not be, do not be chasing after the food that is perishable. Rather, rather, Jesus says to his disciples and to you and to me, rather be after that food which lasts forever. That bread of life which comes from God our Father and nourishes us now 
and nourishes us always. When Jesus was talking to the crowds who he had just fed at the feeding of 5,000, and he tells them this, they say, okay, what do we have to do? Because they want something to do. They're like us. They want something to do in order to get something. That's the way life works. You do something, and then you get something. It's like when you get a phone call that says you've just won a two-week vacation in Florida you know that you're going to have to do something in order to get that vacation. And so they asked Jesus, what must we do? And Jesus says to them, there is nothing that you must do. For the bread that comes from heaven, the bread that comes from my Father, the bread that will feed you now and for all eternity is not something that you can do something to get. It is something that is based only, only on your trust in God. That is the work of God, Jesus says to those disciples and to you and me, to believe in God, to trust God, that God will give you what you need, that God will give you the bread of life, the strength to go on, the courage to be in the midst of a world that seems to be spinning faster and faster every day. All you must do, Jesus says, is to open your hearts to that relationship with God, to trust God, to be with you, to trust God to give you what you need, to believe that in every moment, you are not alone, but are with the one who gives you everything that you need. Jesus says, the manna from heaven wasn't from Moses, but from my father. And he's using the Father the same way he does when he teaches us the Lord's Prayer. We translated it, Our Father. But maybe it would be closer to say, Dad. It's that intimate relationship. That at arm's reach, I mean, not at arm's reach, but it, in close relationship with God. It is in that relationship that we receive Jesus it is in that relationship that we receive that which we need, the bread of heaven, the water of life. For when we open our hearts, beloved, when we open our hearts to God, when we believe that God will give us that which we need, when we believe that God is not somewhere as far off, but here with us in this life, when we believe that the bread that God gives us here and now, lasts not only for today, but forever. Then we have received what God has promised, God's love, always. Jesus in our lives, in our hearts, and the bread, the bread which lasts not just today, but forever. I read this week a, a story from a commentator from England named Robert Hock. He uh, had been living in the United States, but last December went back to England to be close to his family. And it was, as you know, in the middle of the COVID crisis that we seem not be able to get out of. But anyway, it was in the middle of that, and they had to go into quarantine. And so he said that, you know, my children who hadn't seen their grandparents for a year and a half saw them only through glass. And our neighbors, whom we had lived next to for years and years and years, we could only wave to across the street. It was, he says, as if we were, in St. Paul's words, seeing through a glass darkly. We were there, but not quite 
And one day, one day, he and his wife were leaving their house, and their neighbor came out about the same time, and so he said, we waved because that's what we were doing. But the woman neighbor said, stop a minute. And she brought out a loaf of freshly baked bread. And she set it on a little table that was between the houses and left it there for them to pick up, still warm, still full of the aroma of baking. And he said, that, that loaf of bread was a lot more than flour and water and some heat. It was a symbol of the relationship which we had with those people. That while we could not live it fully in the moment, was still there. Was still there in that bread, which was a product of the love we shared. And which would nourish us far more than just wheat and water. And so it is with us. As we receive from the love of God the bread of life, as we receive Jesus into our hearts, as we receive the presence of God in our life now, it is the promise of God's presence with us always. It is the promise of God walking with us through whatever life brings to us. It is God's love. It is God's love made human in Jesus. It is God's love made tangible in the bread of the altar. It is our God who chooses us to choose us in Jesus, in the bread, and in every other way to be present to us here in this place, in whatever life throws at us, and in all the wild world of creation. And to this, we say thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Dearly beloved, let us stand together and confess our common faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Prayers of the people can be found on form six on page 392 in the blue book. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all those who gospel and all who sing the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Ian and Laura, our bishops, Mark, our priest, Bill and Ben, non preocial priests, Maggie, our regional missionary, for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We are praying this morning for Letty, Kevin, Mark, Greg, Francis, Dorothy, Catherine, Melissa, Liam, Eliza, Jim, Wayne, Mary Ellen, Claire, Nadia, Linda, Chris, Karen, Steve, Nina, Tony, Jacob, Bryson, Jeremy, Brittany, Claudette, Maria, Linda, Matt, Heather, Mary, <coughs> excuse me, um, and for um, Peter and Diane. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. For the anniversaries of John and Joanne Palicka, Ray and Jan Biankowski. For the birthdays of Christopher Francis, Teddy Helprin, Laura Soma, Mariel Spooner, Grover Cleveland, Terry Sessions, Joe Papasil, and David Abbott. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially those in whose name the altar flowers are given, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Kenneth and Barbara Hill and Joseph Angelo. St. Vincent School in Port de Prince, the Cheyenne River Lakota Indian Reservation, for the preservation and protection of God's creature, creation and creatures, for our veterans and their families in health, for the sick and homebound of our parish, for the protection of those American men and women in harm's way, all our young people studying remotely at school, studying abroad, or in the service of our nation, for peace in our world in our time. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome. It's great to have you all here on this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, or being watching us online. It's great to have Marcus back. He had a great vacation and we're glad to have him back. And I'm glad to be back as well after my little brief, uh, brief time away. It's August, uh, as the calendar says, and uh, with August comes September, and with September comes church school. And so we'd like you to be thinking about uh, whether it is you hear God calling you to be a part of our church school ministry uh, to our children and, uh, and young people. Uh, we need volunteers to help us on Sunday mornings, and uh, if you feel that call, or uh, perhaps you feel me tugging on your lapel, uh, then maybe you, know, you can be part of that, uh, that important and, and strong ministry we have here at St. John's. So be thinking about that uh, and, and talk to me or talk to Debbie Alprin uh, about that uh, as time uh, approaches. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Our worship king continues with the great thanksgiving this morning. We'll be using Eucharistic prayer A, page 361 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his rhythm life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.